And the Brandon Wheat Kings fell in Everett 3-2. Uh, tonight, they're at Seattle, and we've got the voice of the Wheat Kings, Brandon Crow, joining us from 880 CKLQ. There he is. I've been waiting a bit to get him on. How you doing, Brandon? I'm great, Rod. How are things? Things are very well, man. We're sitting here talking sports with guys like you, uh, pinballing back and forth between curling, football, hockey, and what have you. Um, 3-2 loss last night on the roadie for you guys in Everett. Tell me a little bit about that game. Well, it was tough. Uh, Brandon had a 2-0 lead going into the third period, uh, but the Silver Tips had a 5-on-3 to start the third. They scored 14 seconds in. They scored again a minute later, uh, got back into the game, and then they had all the momentum, got the go-ahead goal, uh, you know, five minutes in. So basically three goals in the first five minutes of the third period. They took a 3-2 lead. Despite a late push, Brandon just couldn't come back in it. Uh, Cole Fonstad, the former Raider, had a goal and two assists for uh, his uh, Everett debut last night. He was excellent. Uh, just a tough start to the road trip for Brandon. Good effort. Just uh, they've had some trouble scoring, and uh, last night was a, a prime example. Late, they couldn't get the equalizer. Are you in the booth in the arena right now? Yes, I am in Seattle at the ah. Showwear Center. Uh, the team's about to practice um, this morning uh, and then uh, go for lunch, and then we play the T-Birds tomorrow, Portland on Saturday. So uh, the road trip continues. It's 4,500 kilometers start to finish uh, for the Brandon Wheat Kings over the next two weeks. So it's a, it's a long journey, this one. Well, the reason I bring up being in the booth at the rink is like that Everett Event Center where you were last night, I believe is a very unheralded rink. 9,500 seat capacity. It's so loud in there. Is it as good now as it's always been? I used to love going to Everett for games. Oh, absolutely amazing. You, you, do you take an NHL facility and you just shrink it down like they did in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, those old <laughs> movies from the late 90s. And it is a it is a perfect junior rink. Uh, the American junior game, as you remember, Rod, is a little bit different when it comes to the crowd. They do some different things than they do in Canada. They announce when penalties are over that they're back to even strength. They've got some different chants, some different horns, some different songs they play. It's a real neat environment. There was only about 3,200 there last night, but it sounded like there was five they were loud. Uh, what a great building and a great media meal, which is the best part of the whole thing. Let's be honest. That's what we do it for. I was going to uh, say, what was the spread? A William. Yeah. Well, what was on the menu? Meatballs. meatballs? Spaghetti and meatballs, salad. They had cookies, brownies. It was just a full spread. It was unreal. I would have spilled that all over my white shirt. That's why I'm sure you figured out, Brandon, you've been on the road long and always wear black suits. That's so what I would take dark clothes for a long road trip. Yeah. That was not good with spaghetti. Um, by the way, William works writing in on the Facebook wall. He says, nice to see Crow miss him doing Melfort Mustang games. And I'm sure that Brandon does too, because yeah, it's such a special part of the world up there, but he's doing great with the Wheat Kings. And, and one thing you wanted to talk about was the, Dave Lowry effect. First year head coach of the Wheat Kings. He's a dub veteran, NHL veteran of many years, both on the ice and behind the bench. What's the Dave Lowry effect been like in Brandon? Well, this is a rebuilding team as people, I think from a Wheat King perspective, fans have struggled with it because Brandon's always been a team that perennial playoff team year after year after year. When Kelly McCrimmon was at the helm, they rarely missed the playoffs. To put it in perspective, this team's only missed the playoffs three times since I've been born. Uh, so they have, uh, they've been a playoff team every year and now they're kind of going through a bit of a transition. Kelly moving on to Vegas. Um, you know, open some doors for some new guys to take some new roles. And this team, since that championship that they won here in Seattle back in 2016, have really kind of struggled to find their way. Um, they've got a, got a lot of good young pieces right now. And I think Dave Lowry is a key piece of that. He was hired in the offseason. He comes in with a ton of experience. You know, a thousand games in the NHL is nothing to shake a stick at. Um, the guy just, he, he's all business. And, uh, you know, from a, uh, from a young player perspective, to look at his resume, these guys will run through a brick wall for him. Some learning curves early on, but he's teaching them that, you know what, wins and losses don't matter as much as your work ethic. And uh, to me, uh, that is the biggest difference. This team works hard night in and night out, and they kind of uh, are playing a Dave Lowry type game. That's impressive. And we know the Wheat Kings, Brandon, are on that upswing. And I'm really excited for this team down the stretch, but into next year, too. I think that's going to be really exciting. Yeah. Um, and, and one of the guys that we haven't talked enough about, I'm sure he will end up on our prospects profile at some point, is Ridley Gregg. Uh, how's, he, how's he been early on in the season? Because he was really fun to watch. You could just see the spurts of potential watching him last season. 
Yeah, Ridley Gregg's going to be a star. And, you know, I, I talked to Dave Lowry with, uh, about uh, him early in the year, and Dave said to me straight up, this kid will play in the NHL. There is no doubt about it. And, and when you see some of the things he does on the ice, it is he, – he can do things on the ice that other guys couldn't dream of doing. Now, he doesn't quite put it all together yet. Um, and there are times where you're thinking, oh, my, this kid is is the best player on the ice. And there are other nights where you see that he's a teenager and he takes a dumb penalty and, and costs his team or he doesn't quite have the, the full 200-foot back check that he should. He's maybe a little um, cautious when it comes to – um, you know, getting in there physically because every time he throws a big check, he seems to get suspended is the way it goes with Ridley Gregg. But, you know, he's a real skilled player. He can shoot the puck. He's got amazing hands. And, you know, as he starts to figure it out under the tutelage of Dave Lowry, you know, kind of following in the footsteps of Stelio Mateos, um, he, he's going to be a good player. I, I'm shocked that, you know, he wasn't really ranked that high going into uh, the uh, early season NHL rankings. Uh, but I think he's a guy that could be a, a guy that climbs up second round, early third round pick. His dad's a, a scout with the Philadelphia Flyers, had a long NHL career. Uh, people are starting to take notice of him. And, you know, last night I, uh, in Everett, Steve Eiserman was at the game, uh, of course, scouting for the Detroit Red Wings. He was sitting down there. And, uh, you know, as I walked by, I took a peek and he had a couple names highlighted and Ridley Gregg's name was one of them. So, you know, guys are starting to notice him. And I think uh, the Eastern Division is going to start to see a lot more from Ridley Gregg here in the next uh, you know month or two as he gets his feet under him. Um, Brandon. The great segue here for the next and last point. Brandon Crowworth is the voice of the Brandon Weekings. He's in Seattle. Just got a notification here on my phone. Vegas Golden Knights announcing forward Valentin Zykov knowingly used a banned substance without team consent. Uh, and he's been suspended 20 games by the NHL. So the Vegas flu hits Valentin Zykov. <laughs> for a banned substance. And you wanted to talk about the Wheat Kings, Golden Knights ties. They're undeniable. Um, obviously, yep. Brandon is a Golden Knights town. That's got to be the number one NHL team. Or What's bigger, the Jets or the Knights in, Ve in Brandon? In Brandon, the Vegas Golden Knights by a country mile. Right. And I'm not afraid to say it. I mean, I'm a Jets fan, but I've slowly – got a closet full of Vegas clothing and I've started to become a Vegas fan. It's, it's amazing to see Brandon and how they've come along uh, with their NHL teams. You know, a couple years ago it was the Philadelphia Flyers. You had Ron Hextall, Nolan Patrick, Ivan Provorov, Braden Chen, and everyone was wearing flyer jerseys. Now it's Vegas. Everybody's talking about Vegas. Everywhere you go, there's stickers on cars, people wearing hats. You go to the rink, there's Vegas jerseys everywhere. Uh, and like I have in my game notes uh, every night, there are eight people working with the Vegas Golden Knights that have direct ties to the Brandon Wheat Kings. The connection is starts right at the top with Kelly McCrimmon. You've got Vaughn Carpin, the director of player personnel. Bobby Lowe's is the assistant director of player personnel. Ryan Kramer, captain, he's an assistant coach. Mike Kelly was a head coach of the Brandon Wheat Kings. He's an assistant in Vegas. Darren Millard, TV host, used to be the play-by-play -play guy of the Wheat Kings. And then you've got Ryan Reeves, Mark Stone, Reed Duke, um, it, it's just an unbelievable connection to Vegas. And then, of course, you got Zach Whitecloud, a Brandon boy. Didn't play for the Wheat Kings, but he's from Brandon and grew up watching the Wheat Kings. He's part of the organization as well. Uh, it, it's really cool to see the way Brandon has kind of become a little mini Vegas and, and the way they cheer for the Golden Knights. Uh, every time you go to the rink, uh, you know, in the offices and in and around the rink, the TV's always got the Vegas game on. Um, you know, when they show the out-of-town scoreboard, it's the only one fans really cheer about. They have started to maybe not care as much about the Jets. They're on a bit of a downswing right now, and it, it's crazy. Everyone loves Vegas. My wife got me a Vegas jersey for Christmas last year. I'm just trying to decide whose name I'm going to put on it, and it's super cool. It's a great, it's a great story, really, and to have that tie to Brandon, it really gives people something to cheer about. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You named ten guys, by the way, so you might have to update your game yeah. notes instead I'm just of eight. Looking at my game notes, I, I got to start adding some names to this thing. That's I, right. I got in trouble last night. Uh, I had in my game notes based on elite prospects that the newly acquired defenseman Dom Schmeeman was in game two hundred. Well, Dave Lowry goes in, gives him a big condition. Turns out it was game two hundred and nine. Ah. <laughs> elite prospect was wrong. And so right before the game, when I was feeling good about it, I had Dave Lowry barking at me about double-checking my facts. So <laughs> I got to dial it in here, Rod. I got a day to get ready. I got to get things in order. I understand it. All those coaches giving us a hard time. Well, hey, <laughs> uh, hopefully you get down to Pike Place Market tonight or do something fun in Seattle. And, uh, Brandon, I appreciate this and all the support of what we do. I really appreciate it. Thank you.
You guys are doing a great job. Love, uh, love watching. Love watching what you're doing. I got to get you something for your desk, though. That's yes, you do. Pretty. Uh, there's a little bit of yellow missing on that desk. I'll, I'll send something here this week. I agree. Thank you, Brandon. See you later, fellas. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.